Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And here it's still only June. And do, are the plants in your yard acting more like it's full? It's almost odd. Well, I mean, it's been too I hot. Feel Everything's like, dying. It's kind of weird. I feel like flowers that normally don't bloom until July, like are, the orange are, tiger lilies, those aren't June things, I don't think. And I've got them everywhere. I'm like, so, what is happening? So I measure mine by my rose campions, which is like yep. a bright pink flower. <laughs> That's the color of my lipstick. That's how I remember it. And uh, they usually only bloom after pork fest and they're almost done. And like my lilies are done. Like everything that, like everything I time seems everything. Everything like two or three weeks clean. ahead. Pork fest to post pork fest, and honestly, in the woods, it's like the the plants are really lush. Like yes. maybe we had an I don't know unleashing of an insane um, amount of methane into the, um, the atmosphere. Yeah, everything is definitely lush. Plants that I didn't even think like I have that whole hill behind me, and I plant things. And when we sold the house on Parker Street, I took things with me, and I dug up this um, hydrangea that. I didn't think, like, I just stuck it on the hill, and then I think last year I was like, yeah, this sucker. I thought I actually had ripped it out. Right. And, and now it's Well, like I have a hydrangea growing in front of my house that I didn't plant, I don't think, that I could see was getting going to have flowers this year. And this morning I was taking some pictures of the different things that are growing, and I glance up the hill, and I'm like, and there's a freaking hydrangea up there, and I'm like... <laughs> I really thought it was dead. Yeah, so it's, it's it's odd. It's quite warm. It seems like things are a little out of balance. But right? on the good news side of history, Julian yeah. Assange is free. So what I an interesting thing because we were watching. Let's see, what's today? Wednesday. So it must have been Sunday. It must have been Monday night when we were. I was reading it before I went to bed. I was like, oh, there, Assange is um, getting out. And it is funny to watch the way the headline reads because the headlines in my circle of people is Assange is free, right? Headlines in the union leader were Assange pleads guilty. And I thought, well, yes, technically he did. That's what he did. Um, the, I, my presumption is the federal government in the United States realized he was never going to be extradited to the United States. He would just as soon die in a jail someplace else than come here. He's not an American citizen. The federal government has no business charging him as an American citizen. And I think they, they have no business charging him, period, right, but if we saying, believe in the First Amendment and free speech. And even beyond the content <laughs> of whatever the alleged the charges would have been, he's not even an American citizen, right? So... Um, I think they realized, like, this is never going to end. And, and so they, they made a deal. They made a deal with him. He pled guilty to, like, one charge of conspiring to steal something, something. It, it, no, it was a, one charge of violating the Espionage Act. But it was conspiracy um, to violate. Right, because even under Chelsea Manning's uh, guilty plea, they, they, they so, so basically what happened, right? So let's... Set it up correctly. Julian Assange is the equivalent of the New York Times, Bob Woodward, anybody, or well, let's any put it, reporter. Sure, let's put it in context. People might understand oh. with with whistleblowing, reporting, and what the role of the media is. So the role of the media is actually to tell us the truth, so that we can figure out what the TF is going on in life, so that when there are problems we can fix them. At no stage did they ever say that anything he reported on was untrue. Right. It was incredibly embarrassing from Cablegate, the diplomatic things yep. that came out where it was very clear to the rest of the world that American diplomats are kind of brats, that they're rude, that they call people names behind their backs. It was embarrassing. Then collateral damage, right? The video that came out that showed the we kill people. War crimes. <laughs> war crimes. Uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, showing that there were no weapons of mass destruction, showing all the lies. Then the DNC mm -hmm. cables that came out, right? And right. this was in 2016, and that was extremely embarrassing to the Democratic uh, Party because it became very clear that they were colluding to put Hillary Clinton in office despite Bernie Sanders also running. Now, Sanders is a socialist. I wouldn't right. have been keen on him either. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, right. I, he's I a different you. kind of socialist, right? 
Uh, so what I did hear that I thought was very interesting this morning on Twitter was that, uh, or on X I should say, was that all the DNC files have been removed yeah. from WikiLeaks. Right. So I think there's maybe like a little side story there, but of course a lot of us have access to the original documents, yes. and now maybe we should do a little more yeah, digging. Yeah, so that, I mean, it is really, really good news. It's nice to see that, you know, one of the people being held captive, basically, um, has, so he pled guilty in a federal court on some territory of the United States, some island, some place that was closer to Australia. Um, a Bitcoin millionaire, uh, 500, half a million dollar donation, eight Bitcoin to offset the cost of the private jet. Um, they, I don't know if the jet had to pick him up on the island or where. And then he was off to Australia. I saw, I was listening to a little bit of Australian parliament saying, you know, regardless of what you think happened or didn't happen or all this stuff, this has just gone on way too long and we just want him back. Well, but it's important to not actually gloss over it. All the, all the mainstream media, and I'm calling out the Washington Post, the New York Times, every CBS, NBC, ABC, all of them mm -hmm. did not support an actual journalist who was telling the truth because they lost their minds and decided to side with the National yep. in the Security Intelligence yep. Agencies. And that is not the way that we should be running this country. We cannot have a complacent media. All this only works if one group of people are holding the other one accountable. Mm -hmm. If they're all going lockstep into some goose-stepping, it's not going to work. So the things people should look for in future is they did the classic playbook. So what they did is first they told the big lie. He stole the materials. He's a hacker. He's whatever. No, he's a journalist. He's a journalist like Bob Woodward was a journalist or Carl Bernstein was a journalist, mm -hmm. although it turns out they might have actually been intelligence assets. Um, deep Throat within that Nixon yeah. scenario, right, from back uh, in the 70s, uh, Deep Throat was basically Chelsea Manning. I mean, Chelsea did go to prison and right. got uh, uh, pardoned <coughs> by Obama. And then, so they told the big lie, he stole it. Then they overcharge anyone that... They always overcharge and hope that you'll plead to the lower, lower charge. charge and, right? So they charged him uh, in the 2019 indictments, it was for 175 years in prison, much like our friend Ross Ulbricht, who did get sentenced to li two life sentences yep, yep. without the chance of parole. So I guess my points here today is don't trust your government. I'm glad Assange is out. I think it's a hopefully some kind of starting point, but I'm also a little sus about why now? Yeah. What are they well, hiding? There's probably, well, um, um, either that or they're taking it out of a out of play for the election cycle. Well, I think because that is a that could be a um, you know Trump saying he would pardon Assange might draw in some votes that the Democrats don't want mean, to aren't willing to. So give it's up. interesting because Trump's saying a lot of things that he could have done in his first four years. So you know I I want to believe him. <laughs> uh, he is on record saying he would commute the rest of Ross's sentence, yep. saying that 11 years in prison from the time he was like 26 <coughs> to 40 plus. Imagine spending your 40th birthday in prison yep. for doing things yeah. to try and make the man, the system better. Um, before we were away, because we, that was, feels a long, long time ago now. Um, was the filing period, and I think, so we taped on Wednesday and the filing period was ending. That's and Friday. And then last week mm -hmm. was the opportunity for um, the two parties to fill in any vacant slots. It doesn't look like, um, from what I can tell anyways, it doesn't look like anybody filled in anything in Manchester. Um, so I just thought maybe we could go through, like, who the head, you know, who the matchups are and what, you know, what the lay of the land in Manchester looks like. Um, so starting, they've rearranged the districts. I hate it. Um, we used to have this nice system where it was all, all of our wards, 1 through 12, were in the same order in the state rep districting. So you knew. Now they, they're all over the place. So it goes, you know, it goes ward 8, ward 6, ward 2, ward 12. Ward, okay, it makes no sense. Yeah, so I, I know where that came from, and I won't go there. Um, 
So starting, I guess, in the North End, North End, Ward 1, Andrew Frommuth, who has run before as a Republican, is running again. There's, a, there's only one Republican on the ballot. Um, is running against Matt Wilhelm, who's the minority leader, if I'm not mistaken, or the minority floor leader or something. Is so interest full actual self-declared communist, or is that not well, him? Well, it's hard to tell. They all no, no, of, there's, uh, th no, there no, there no, are a couple no. of people up at the oh, state no, house I don't who think are like, he is. I am a communist. Um, but he was in the flotarial and moved over to Ward 1, okay. which I thought was interesting. I was like, hmm. Um, and Christine Siebert, who's also run before. I don't know if she's been elected or not, to be honest. It all doesn't really matter. Um, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Ward 2, and Ward 1 is the only district that Keith Murphy as a Senate candidate covers. He's got Goffstown and Hooks It and, I don't know, Dunbarton, I don't know, a bunch of places, and Ward 1. Um, so that'll be the only place you'll see uh, Keith Murphy on the ballot. Uh, Ward 2, which is a, I would say, a um, Democrat leaning ward, um, a gentleman named Ben Crescott, who I've seen um, over the years. I think he put his name in in the past. He's running as a Republican against uh, Linda D. Silvestro and David Priest. They're, they're both incumbents, so that's going to be a that's an uphill battle. Uh, ward three, which is the downtown ward, oof, um, a gentleman named Tim Peters is running on the Republican side, and there is a primary on the Democrat side. Hmm. Mary Georges, John Judy, and Anthony Harris for two seats. Hmm. So there'll be a primary there. Um, Ward 4, some, a gentleman named Dennis DeMars, or DeMar, De, Demers, hmm, I think it's DeMars, um, running as a Republican against socialist Chris Hebert and Don Bouchard, the two old men who were at the, at the city hall the day I, we were down there filing as delegate and neither of them seemed to have any idea about anything like I'm listening to them you were like are you even in touch with what's going on so that's a bizarre match uh, Ward 5 again inner city very tough Kathy Paquette who's run before and did a pretty good job in the aldermanic race um, so if she runs hard she's up against Kathy Staub who's a union teachers union pack and Hyacinth John Landry <laughs> Highest is Jean Landry. So that's a colorful word. So we'll see. <laughs> that's a hard name for right, a word I was like, like yours. <laughs> what the heck? Um, ward 6 is a strong Republican district. Larry Gagney, Will Infantine. They're the incumbents. They're running again. Um, Repub Democrats only put up Dan Bergeron. It's nice to know that Dan Bergeron was able to get there in time this time and didn't miss the deadline by five minutes. Um, so I'm sure they'll be doing a write-in campaign for th these vacant seats. Usually somebody does a write-in campaign for Um from one party or the other, so that's where it gets a little hairy. Um, Although I thought what the NHGOP strategy they, was that they only wanted one name on each of But that the, doesn't stop anybody from right. doing a write-in, and if the Democrats do the write-in on the Republican side, they get their name on our list. Hmm. So it's, yeah, it's one of those. Um, doesn't sound Ward 7, nice. Brian Cole's the incumbent. He's the only one on the ballot there on the Republican against Mike Rochelle and Patrick Long. Not Pat Long, the one running for Senate. Patrick Long, just to confuse things, the other Pat Long. Um, ward 8 is a strong Republican ward. Mark McLean and Mark Prue running for re-election there against Laura Quiroga, who I believe ran for... Didn't she run for, like, a school board at large or alderman at large or something remember. like that? And good old Tommy Katsiantonis is back. Tommy Katsiantonis, who literally was went to jail for stealing taxpayer money, literally wants to represent people in the state house again after he stole their money. Um, so there's that. Uh, Ward 9, Jose Mar Marte, I don't know how he ran for... Um, I think he ran for alderman. And Pierre Dupont are running as Republicans in Ward 9 against... Good old uh, non-binary Alessandra Murray and Josh Query. So there, that's the LGBTQ plus team right there. Um, just saying. They, that's what they go for. That is literally, although uh, um, I think Alessandra also worked for the uh, pro-abortion organization that she was getting a paycheck from and got the slap down that she couldn't do that. Um, I did think yesterday I saw all the congressional critters, New Hampshire congressional critters, were like posting about abortion nonstop, nonstop. Yeah. And I thought, wow. I mean, and and actually false and misleading information. Like they keep coloring what is going on in New Hampshire's abortion laws. 
in some weird way where I'm like, none of that's true. Well, that's no female has been, uh, uh, their right has been taken away, whatever. You can have an abortion in so, New Hampshire up until 24 weeks, which is six months. And really, if you want to kill your baby after six months, there's still ways. There's probably okay. issues. Well, and, um, but I thought, wow, you know, if we had only actually, like every time you saw the word abortion, Imagine you saw the word adoption. Yeah, I know. So for every time, instead of killing an offspring. Why not uh, just, provide just, them for a family that's like desperate that to have children? For people who actually want to Raise help children. other yeah. people, right? Nope, they and never it's do. just so sick well, and I distorted, saw, I can't even. So I think what, what you're seeing is you've got the, the federal... DNC message, which has been trickling down to all the way down to the, you know, to state level races about, oh, Republican extremists on abortion and they won't let, and they'll protect Roe v. Wade and protect women's rights, shoot, blah, blah, blah. But then, um, so the, the, Dem the Republicans are trying to counter that, but I think they're not, they're missing it because all I just keep saying to people is, but the Democrats are lying to you because Republicans did not pass any extreme abortion <laughs> restrictions. We allow legal abortion up to 24 weeks, which is at or more than New York State, Massachusetts, Illinois, California, All of and others. Europe. So... All those socialist right. countries you guys love, Finland, so, Sweden, all of those places. We hardly have the most restrictive abortion um, laws in the state. So to paint that Republicans somehow did this is absurd. The, mo the, the most absurd one I saw was Joyce Craig put out a thing. And I thought, first of all, these are not things. She says that after she had her two children, she had a miscarriage. She was getting an ultrasound and they couldn't find the baby's heartbeat or whatever. But she's thankful that she was able to, I forgot the terminology DNC. she used. No, but she used some it's other fluffy word because we don't want to say, you know, to t extract what is now not a viable, you know, unborn child. I get it. But she said, thankfully, she was able to do... Okay, there was no restrictions on abortions in New Hampshire whatsoever when that happened. And even under the current laws, you still would be able to. They're not going to make you carry an unalive fetus. Un it's, it's, it's absurdism. And what it is, basically, for folks back home, it is the, it, it's the propaganda playbook of the big lie, right? So now, a lockstep, they're just coming out and they're saying this one consistent thing that is entirely... It's like just a entirely lie. Entirely untrue. You want to know what, what, what my other? But they're doing it to hijack females' emotions yes. around body autonomy, yeah. which is a good sentiment to have. Yes, you should believe you have self ownership over your own body. Probably less so to like I don't know, kill your baby. Right. Maybe Especially more so to be like, hey, I'm an assertive, present right. human. Especially a like we, I was at a meeting last night and people were like, I don't understand who who is still having an abortion at six months, and I'm thinking, and the girl, somebody was like, you're like pregnant, pregnant at that. You're not like. Kind of but no one really is, or very few people are, or sometimes it's, you know, something with the baby, or, right. you know, the, maybe sick. the mother's mental, or whatever, right? But it's the exception, not the rule. But what they do is they take all the outliers, yes. take the craziest scenario, and then try and make it like, this is normal, and therefore we're doing these crazy bad yeah. things because, right? Like, it's, it's irrational and... I, I mean, I can't even um, go with the stupidity. Yeah. Sorry. So that's what the, what's happening. You see that messaging a lot, and I think you'll see that same messaging going on and on through the election cycle, unfortunately. Um, back to these races just quickly. Um, so Ward 10, that's my ward. I'm not running, thank God. Um, a gentleman named Matt Drew, who I think lives up the street from me, is running as a Republican, and Susan... Kratian and Samuel Patali, two all completely new names in Ward 10. Ward 11, Bill Gabler and Carl Beisel on the Republican side in a primary. Pat Cornell, incumbent. Nicole Leapley, is she an incumbent? She is. Know. Isn't she uh, on the school, school board? board. I don't know. I yeah, don't think, I think she so. was. I don't think. I know she's she a doesn't statement. pick up her signs right. after and, she runs. And Matt Ping, so they have a primary there. Um, and then Ward 12. Where's Ward 12? Juliette DiPietro and Stephen Kesselring, 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 I think will be interesting to watch, versus uh, Jessica Grill, who I think is an incumbent, I don't know, and Julie Smith. Um, in the Floterials, you've got the 689 Floterial, you have Mark Warden running for, he's represented Ward 8 before, 
and Goffstown before, and he's running in the Floterial with John Morton, who I know, let's see there, I think he's New York Life, um, or Allstate, I don't know. Um, in the 2457, so like this middle city area, Melody Lachance Smith, who I know who she is. Um, I don't know her personally, but I know who she is. Um, Ryan Heber and Lee Xavier Davis um, are running. Uh, and then all of the ones in that first, um, in the 689, you got Ben Broody and Maxine Mosley. Ben Broody's an incumbent, so it's interesting that he switched over to the Floterial instead of just staying in Ward 6. Um, so Ben's gonna be harder to beat than Maxine. Um, in the west side, so you've got 10, 11, 12, Ward 1 and Ward 3. Um, on Republican side, you've got Carlos Gonzalez, Alex Krantz, Andre Rosa, and Carla Garrick. There's four seats, so that's not a primary. Against the only, um, I think the only incumbent is Mark McKenzie. You have Trinidad, Tellez, Aaron Kerwin, and Suraj Butako, I don't know, something. So interesting. Um, so there's a lot of people, a lot of new names. Um, what is interesting, I did look because somebody asked me this last night and I was like, well, there's a formula. So the Secretary of State's office, because everybody's like, how did the names appear on the ballot? Um, I thought they used to pull a, I think they used to pull a letter. Right. They would say like K, the K, everybody, we're going to start everybody with K. But I don't know why, but we've changed it where it depends on how many candidates there are. And then they draw numbers. So like in your, excuse me, in your race, if there's four candidates, they start with the fourth name. So that means. Hopefully Andre, that's me. No, it would be Andre Rosa. Should fourth be Fourth alphabetically? Yes. Or, oh, not fourth no. registered. No, no, no. So oh. Rosa would be the fourth candidate. So he would be, go first, then you, because it would go Garrick, Gonzalez, Krantz. So it's just interesting, like people think that's all random or it, it, there's a bias and it's not. There's like some, there's a whole sheet of, oh, you know. there's a bias, No, folks. you know what I mean? There's a sheet of how they do it and they just, that's what they do. They pull this thing and for the next, I think it's through to 2026, this goes. Every election got, follows these rules as far as placement. And they do the same thing for which order the columns political party columns. There's a whole methodology for that. Um, so it'll be interesting. Now here in Manchester, we have three different Senate districts. Um, the first one is Senate District 16, which is the seat that Keith Murphy has. Um, he has no Democratic opponent at this point, um, which means they'll do some sort of write-in and supposedly it's gonna be, oh, she ran for mayor. Oh, Triskiani. Triskiani is going to try to um, write in against Keith, so that'll be interesting. Um, that's a pretty Republican district that includes Goffstown and Hooksett, so they've got like the strong Republican base. Then there's a uh, district that's 1618 is Donna Susie's seat that Victoria Sullivan's running for. That is wards five through nine and the town of Litchfield. So that's got at least two solid Republican wards and very Republican Litchfield with a couple probably seven and nine are probably toss-up wards and five's a little trickier. And then there's what was Lou D'Alessandro's seat forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, that's Dist Senate District 20 that they have a Democrat primary. Sean Parr and Pat Long are primarying for that seat. D Pat Long's the anointed Democrat. And then at the very last minute, Brittany Ping mm. sat, signed up to... Um, because they had nobody. So, oh, I wonder why. So, it, th that's who we've got. Um, I think that's a district that's, you know, as much as I'd love to believe that any some friends of mine could win, um, that district's very, very Democrat. I think it's like a D plus 10 or some crazy. Guess we'll never know, um, folks. So, that's that. Um, so, we got a lot of races. There's a bunch of people running for governor. It cracks me up. Like, you look at the some of these lists, there's like, 13 people on the Republican side running for like yeah, CD2. It's, it's, it's almost like there's rank incompetency all over and it what do you looks mean? not very competent to me. I would okay. like to suggest no, that, that people means. look at this book on, uh, on Amazon, uh, Growing Liberty. It's a really great new book that came out by Matt Barney. Uh, it... Uh, 
highlights a bunch of people and sort of talks about what we're trying to do here in New Hampshire. So I want to make sure I didn't miss mentioning that. Um, that's really it. Um, if you've got any suggestions for TV shows or things we should know about that are happening here in Manchester, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and we'll you know look into whatever you have to send our way. And um, obviously, if you're watching the show, you survived the really, really <laughs> hot heat and the tornado warning and um, all that good stuff. It is still warm today. It's like 87 degrees out there. It's, it's going to be a hot summer, I think. So, you know, if you haven't bought your air conditioner, you know, it's time. Get your get go buy an air conditioner at least for one room in your and house. And go enjoy some homemade ice cream. We did that when we picked up the plants. We put on all our plants at the community garden yep. down on the west side yesterday. That was good. Lots of spiders. Oh, so yeah. uh, I have so many berries coming in. I'm gonna have raspberries out my ear. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I have a couple of blueberries, and <laughs> I think my beer, birds my get blueberries most of mine. are overtaken by my raspberries. I don't, <laughs> underneath there somewhere, there might be a strawberry plant that the bunnies are eating. I don't know. Oh. Um, but that's all we have. Um, we'll be back next week and uh, enjoy the weather. Get out there. Uh, you know, take a walk. If you got a dog, take your dog for a walk. Uh, go check out the city pools. All the city uh, aquatic situations are open. The one over um, on the west side is open as of last weekend, but won't be open this weekend because there's a swim meet. But you can go today. You can go tomorrow. <laughs> um, but that's it. That's all we have. Thanks, guys. Bye.